Good afternoon. Hello. My name is John Mitchell, and I serve as Executive Director here at Arden Wood in San Francisco, and I'm today here today with Amy Sparkman, and I serve as Director of Communications and Planning. And together we've been working with a, the Planning Ahead Committee and the Board of, of Trustees here at Ardenwood for the last couple of years, thinking about Ardenwood's future for the next 100 years as we approach our first 100 year mark. We've been very pleased with uh, the huge outpouring of support and good questions. And what we want to do is take some time today to answer some of those questions. Um, and just, you know, let's work together to truly, and I wrote this down just a little while ago, to, you know, truly love this whole idea of Ardenwood into view. And I just must say that's, that's not a clever tagline or word play. Um, it's fervent prayer. Um, we need to see this new idea. Um, and that's what we're here about today. Um, just loving this idea of Ardenwood into view for future generations, not only for now, but for future generations. So yeah, it's not that we're reinventing Ardenwood. We're taking, we want to build on the past and generate something that is fresh and moving forward with the times the way everything else in our world is moving forward with the times. And I'll try to share some of my own experience. Um, so I've been in this role um, 12 years as executive director. Um, before that, I was for six years, the first director of development at Ardenwood from 1998 to 2004 raised a lot of money. We did a lot of huge renovations at that time. We put a new roof on. Some of you remember some of these things. Um, so I, I know Ardenwood pretty well. Um, I live nearby. So I think um, we'll have a good discussion today or good question and answer period and just appreciate we won't have all the answers. Um, we hope that you had a chance to look at the frequently asked questions or FAQs as they call them now um, to get closer to an understanding, but, but the, the headline here really is your prayerful support um, of what we're trying to accomplish. And hopefully we'll answer a lot of these questions and some will go unanswered at this point, but follow along with us because this is a process. This is not one and done as they say. So one thought that I'd just like to share at the outset is there, um, it could be very tempting to feel that everything we're deciding to do is based on finances. Mm -hmm. It's not. We began this process of thinking about Ardenwood with our mission, and our mission is leading us forward. And that mission is to serve the manual bylaw for Christian science, a Christian science nurse, for the ministry of Christian science nursing. There are nurses needed all over this country and the world. And we want to be more effective um, at supplying them, training them, and sending them out into the field to work where they're being called to, to minister. In order to do that, we have to be able to put our resources, our financial resources, our time, our energy into that mission. And that also means we want to be working with the field to, um, to appeal to the, the, this current generation and the generations to come as far as how to learn, how to minister, how to meet the needs of a, an ever-changing society. That requires change. We all know that. Um, we've seen it in just technology in our lives. As John said in, in his annual meeting talk, the difference between a Cadillac and a Tesla is more than just an upgraded body style. It has to do with fuel and economies of scale and just all energy use. And that's what we're anticipating for a new Ardenwood to move it forward with the mission drawing us forward. And not only that, all of that, absolutely. But who will be the people that carry this forward? Um, how do we entice them? You know, they see this beautiful place and they go, I don't want that. You know, um, some do, 
It's beautiful. There's nothing not to like. It's beautiful. I know every, pretty much every square foot of this property and this building. Um, I came here, as I say, in 1998, knowing that it was clear um, I had a loved one here at the time and um, could see that if someone like myself um, or others didn't grab an oar, whatever metaphor you want to use, I love that, that metaphor of a rowboat, if I didn't grab an oar, I wouldn't need to worry about um, a, a place like Ardenwood to go to because I knew that it wouldn't be here. And so that's why I jumped in um, and have been doing this work. Um, I've loved it and, and no one loves this area more than I do. I've, um, and I'm not making this personal in any way, obviously, but it's just in terms of what are we doing to make sure that we're sustainable for future generations? How much are we relying on others contributing to Ardenwood to make this go? Um, so many questions. So why don't we get started, shall we? Yes. Um, we're going to take the questions in the order in which they arrived in our mailbox, our, our email box, and over the phone and text messages. Um, there are many that are asking similar questions. Um, we'll, we'll answer as many as you're willing to hang around and, and be with us. And this is being recorded, so if anyone that you know isn't able to join today, it will be a, a replay will be on our website shortly after this meeting. Great. So the first question is, hi, if you're really serious about a physical move to a new location, is it your thought that it is still somewhere in the general Bay Area within 50, say, within 50 miles of San Francisco, either north, south, or east? If you go west, you know, you're, you're in the Pacific, so. Um, or are you thinking about possibly another state? Uh, thank you. Um, something we're really praying about. San Francisco Bay Area is very expensive. Everyone knows that. That's, that's not new news to anyone here. Um, let me give one example of something that we had cherished for a while, because that will lead into one of those questions. And that was, I cherished, we cherished the idea of a mental impositions wing. Many of you know that. Um, we got a grant for building out our a fourth floor wing that was being unused, basically the D and E wing, which is our, the, the two Western wings. So when we first estimated that job, it was a million nine. About a year and a half later, two years later, and this is just before COVID, so COVID kind of threw everything off, but still there's a lot of construction in the Bay Area. It went up four times. So it went from 1.9 to 8, 8.2, something like that. 8.2. And um, think about that. Um, that's basically to serve, the area would have served about 11 or 12 patients. That's a lot of money. And so we want to be good stewards um, in terms of the resources and funds that are given to us. Um, we want to do it right. I think that um, one of the things we've been talking about in our planning ahead committee is, is having an elegant solution. I think when people think of Ardenwood, they think of elegance. Definitely want to see that continue, um, and we will. Um, so it's how are we using the resources that we have, and because it's we want to be good stewards. I keep saying the same thing. No, and going adding to that um, again, if we're serving our Christian Science nurses, we want them to have a normal balanced ex life experience. They can't get that in San Francisco. Um, salaries for what they do across the country don't enable them to live in San Francisco in that way. We do provide housing on site. It's not as adequate as we need it to be, um, but it's also not private. It doesn't give a true break from their work experience. Um, so the goal is to have them have that balance in their life, be able to come to their work and give it their all and then go home and be separate from that work and be refreshed. 
so they really are leading leading the way. We have staff who are commuting more than two hours each way in order to afford their living circumstances and work at Ardenwood. That's unsustainable for, for the future where we're not gonna lessen that travel time in, in the world we live in today. So there are many reasons along with just um, salaries and OSHA requirements and labor laws that San Francisco, the Bay Area has ratcheted up over the last 10 or 15 years to a point where it's very challenging for us to operate. We are a nonprofit and that's the that's a model we will we will maintain. And that's not just us. So within 50 miles, it's it's still pretty pricey, as you know, anyone who knows the Bay Area and, and I would guess that that many, a good majority or a lot of the people that are on this um, webinar are in this area. And, and we feel passionately about Arden Wood. I'm first in line. I can assure you that, um, truly. We're trying to, to focus on the mission of Christian science nursing. And so that's the headline here. And that's what the world really needs. Um, we're using, as I mentioned, in my um, part of my report, we're using about 40% of this, of this property in this facility. Um, think about that. Um, but the, let's get back to the specific question right. there in terms of staying close to the Bay Area or in California. When John started the answer by saying, we're, we're really listening for God, to lead that answer, to guide us to the right answer. How many times have we, you know, moved homes and not quite known where we're gonna, where we were going to land, and may even have had a picture of where we wanted to land, and yet we're led somewhere different. And in the end, we say, "Oh my goodness, how grateful we were to have listened and gone with what God had in mind." Are we looking in this in in to stay in California? Yes. Are we open to a different place that would be far better in, in a way we can't see right now? Yes. That's what we're listening. It's a total listening. So um, listen along with us. I, I love that's what I mentioned in my report too of calling all angels. We're listening for what this is because the world needs what Christian science offers. Yes. It needs an alternative. If, if we've learned anything from this COVID experience, my goodness. Um, the importance of what we're about and why we're about it and how we're about it. Um, the world needs what we offer. Several um, of you have offered different, some ideas to us, in fact, of places outside of California. And a few of you have offered ideas inside of California and we, we welcome those. So keep them coming. Keep them coming, please. Go ahead. Okay, next question. And my question is, might you move to a more easily sustainable location? Might possibly, let's see, let's start over. And my question might you, you might your there. move to a more easily sustainable location might possibly make living there as a resident more affordable? I have always loved staying at Ardenwood for rest and study. Well, thank you for that. Isn't it wonderful? Have had some wonderful, inspiring times there, actually even life-changing. And that's what we want to continue. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to make available for future generations. Um, I was just thinking there are churches that have more right size and that I, you know, you get these, these clever terms, you know, this is not a clever term, but if, if you're like in a, in a very large church that's well endowed and you have a very small membership, are you fulfilling the definition of church? I don't know. Um, it's open to question. Uh, these edifices are beautiful. But another thing that I think we've learned over the last couple of years is some people uh, experience church virtually. I know that's a challenge for all of us in terms of this hybrid situation. We want people, we want community. We want people to come together, but we have to rethink these things. And that's what we're trying to do here. That's what, that's what we're doing um, and taking this step. This is not an easy step, friends. Um, and that's why we are wanted to be inclusive in this discussion. Um, because we all love this place, um, no question. But we have to think more of, about mission rather than masonry. Um, so 
I, I want to point out, you, you brought to mind the fact that we have over 200 people who wanted to be part of this Q&A today. Had we had this in person, we couldn't have hosted all of you. And that, that um, is a wonderful example of the way Ardenwood over the last couple of years has been able to reach far beyond our facility. And um, through the different webinars we've had in particular, we had 22 last year. Um, and that, that means the outreach is well beyond a building. And we're so grateful for that because the feedback, the response from those webinars has been unanimously positive and helps us realize that that um, our visiting nursing service can be more expansive. Our nurses are heading out into the field more. We can be more expansive in, in our outreach to serve you. That's the whole reason it's, we're here. We want to serve, exactly. And it was interesting. I just got back last night. Um, I've been in Ohio all week. We just had the AOCSN. It's kind of a trade group for Christian Science Nursing Facilities. We were going to host it in uh, August of 2020. And that got scuttled due to COVID. We had everything set up here at the Weston downtown, Weston St. Francis at um, Union Square. Um, anyway, we just had the first one in three years at uh, in Columbus, Ohio, at one of our sister facilities, which is a beautiful place called Glenmont. Um, but had a discussion with a couple there and just talked about what future generations want. Um, and you know, they don't want the silver. They don't want the, that Chippendale chest that you've cherished for so long. They don't want a lot of these things. Do some? Sure. But the vast majority don't. And so, again, what are we passing along to those coming after us that will be willing to take up the work and, and to see something that more with a, a smaller carbon footprint, um, more energy efficient? Some of the things we've been looking at are amazing. So when we talk about prayerfully looking into the into what the future is, it's an active prayer. This is not, gosh, you know, what's what's coming our way. We're actively walking forward, marching forward, lovingly and listening for what's coming. So when we keep going, with, to, let's just yeah. answer this more a little more specifically. The question is, will it be less expensive to live at Ardenwood? Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Go. We can't answer that question. Um, what we can say is it's not, we don't expect it to be more expensive. Um, and that there are different ways of, we look forward to being able to serve more people. Let's put it that way. Um, it's also interesting. We've been thinking quite a bit about our residential program and the kind of residential program that we imagine having. Um, and one thing that we know is that we want to remain focused on our mission of serving the Ministry of Nursing. And that means that we are not likely to become a senior, a senior residential community that you might find down the street in mainstream society where you can play pickleball and bridge and go to lectures every night and, um, and have a community of 500 people that you might live with. That's a different model than the one that Arden Wood will support. But will there be residents? Absolutely. And just so you know, in, in knowing the history of Ardenwood, because I I know the history pretty well, and have even done a lot of research in, recently, um, and residential came to Ardenwood in the mid 1970s. So Ardenwood, um, why are we using the numbers like the 47 years, 47, that type of thing that I mentioned in my report. So Ardenwood, the property here was purchased in 1927. Things really got, and before that they had a site committee. So, and that's what we have set up a site committee. So they were looking at all over the West Coast. Um, I happen to think that since Marvin and Mary Alice Higgins were the chair of the building uh, committee or rather the site committee and, and the building uh, committee that um, they might've chosen San Francisco because they were from San Francisco. And so the last two finalists uh, were the mission which is actually the sunniest part of the city of San Francisco, city and county of San Francisco. And then here in the West Portal area, which is one of the, the least sunny, um, kind of a foggy area. And it's something that we love here, as you know, with the microclimates, it's, it's fabulous. Um, so they were looking at different places and I lost my train of thought. 
You were talking about what, how it was set up and the fact oh. that in the 70s, the residential program. Right. Came thank in. you. So, so anyway, property was purchased, got the architect, Henry Gutterson, a Christian scientist, also did First Church of Christ Scientist Santa Barbara for those that love that amazing church, Ninth Church, our beautiful church, and many other places. Um, uh, very prolific. He worked with Bernard Maybeck, who we all know from Principia and, and uh, so on. Um, and so the site was chosen. Um, and then uh, construction began in January 1929. We opened in May of 1930. Then from 1930 to 1975, and if you look in the Journal Sentinel Herald or JSH online, you'll see some of the articles that say the mother church is sending a message. We're thinking about these things. We're, we're looking at what the future is. Um, and for, they did, for, the, for the BA for and the BA. for the art, for Ardenwood. For the facilities, you know, they, they sold Pleasant View uh, in Concord, New Hampshire, um, where Mrs. Eddy's beautiful Pleasant View home was. That was built 25 to 1927, something like that. That closed in 1975. And then, um, also, they decided that they would no longer uh, uh, operate the Christian Science Benevolent Association on Pacific Coast, which was this was the West Coast BA, as we all know. Um, and the local field said, we would like to take it over. We would like to continue this idea of Ardenwood. So in 1975, we became independent from the Mother Church. Six years later, the Benevolent Association in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, um, uh, 1981, they became independent. So it really, this is now, that was 47 years up to 1975. So 1975 to 2022, it's 47 years. So it's been interesting the, how things have evolved. Um, and so. The residential community. Thank you. Sorry. You're okay. Need more sleep. Um, <laughs> the residential community. So, um, Bob Moretti, Mr. Moretti, I um, didn't really know him, but just a wonderful and generous supporter, the Moretti family, generous supporters of Ardenwood, um, a, a wonderful contractor. Basically, to make this work, because the, the, the Benevolent Association on Pacific Coast had too much capacity then or space. So they thought, okay, we're going to cut it in half and develop once we surge everybody to one side develop this side and make the suites and everything that you know, for those of you who have stayed here, and then surge those people back and then refinish that side. So there was a lot of work that was done, a lot of infrastructure changing and investment. Um, and that's when the residential program started because before it was basically a rest and study, um, Christian Science Nursing and Christian Science Nurses Training. So it expanded the mission then to make it work. And so we've had, a fairly active um, residential program, but that wasn't a part of the original mission. So we're that's part of the um, prayer and discussion that we're looking at in terms of the whole idea of this planning ahead committee. What is ours to do and what is not ours to do? Mm -hmm. Clearly we need um, residences for students of Christian science, those active working members um, of Christian science. So there's a lot of discussion on that. So we were definitely a part of that discussion. So we just don't know yet, but we see certainly a component um, supporting those that live and love Christian science. And are spending most more of their time studying and supporting the world, praying in that regard as but residents. There's, there's nothing against pickleball. No. <laughs> So we move to the next set of questions, which a couple of them are repeats. Do you plan to stay in California? Ask the next answer. one. Yeah. Yep. Um, the next so one. Yeah. Go are ahead. you thinking of this is a great question? And so this is this this wonderful question dials you into what we've been thinking and praying about. Question: Are you still thinking of a single facility? Or are you considering Ardenwood as a conglomerate of smaller units or houses spread over a geographic area? And simply consolidated under the name Ardenwood. Probably not a not um, a conglomeration, but definitely a different configuration. Um, that's something that you know 
one of the challenges we had during COVID um, in terms of we had the residential population and they were basically sequestered here. Why? Because we have our Christian Science Nursing floor on two, we have a residential floor on three, we have sheltered care on four, so we're vertical. And so, but that limited, for instance, that residential population from having the freedom that they would have had in a different configuration, if that makes sense. So if they were in a different building, they'd have more freedom. Not that we're looking to go into back into a pandemic, but in terms of how we set, how we organize something. And what we really want is a facility that's nimble. I'll give you one example. Have a, an issue with one of the showers um, that we had to fix. Should we have to shut down the water to 117,000 square foot building to fix a shower? Probably not. And so there's just some challenges that we face or we do a lot of infrastructure investment. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of things going on here. But anyway, it might look different in configuration. So that's something we're definitely praying about. And I just wanna to add too, that we do envision um, more visiting nursing, um, being able to expand our, our outreach in that way. And that may mean that there is a, a small site um, at a different location than the main site that would continue to serve the Bay Area if we happen to be located a little further out. Um, there could be a couple of different sites where visiting nurses would actually work from their home base, but be affiliated with Arden Wood. So there, that kind of conglomeration might exist, um, but not in terms of having locations in diff of, of Ardenwood residents and, and skilled care in different towns or cities. Right, and we all might look into doing some partnering with other facilities or mm -hmm. so, because everyone's thinking about this. This is not just Ardenwood. We're taking this step, but I, we know just from being this last week with many of our sister, brother and sister facilities, a lot of people are thinking about this just as branch churches are, we are, we're all thinking, or, you know, think of it in one's own personal sense. You had that beautiful house that you raised your family in, um, and then they've moved away. Everyone loves the house, but do you maintain a 4,000, 5,000 square foot house for one or two people? You know, so it's, it's, it's really praying that through. That's where that wonderful term that one of our, one of our residents shared with us a couple of years ago when she was describing how it felt to move from her home, her large family home to Arden Wood, where the apartment was much smaller. And, she, and instead of saying she was downsizing, she said, what came to me is I'm right sizing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going from one right size to the next right size. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. So the next question. I love this. Will there be a name change since you'll no longer be Arden Wood? And sorry, I'm a, I love history. So how did we get the name Ardenwood? Does anyone know? Some of you know. So this was the Ardenwood section of the city. Ardenwood doesn't mean anything in terms of Christian science or anything. So right here, I'm looking out, we're looking out at on beautiful uh, West Portal Avenue. So that's the West Portal section of the city that we're, we're right next to. But this was the Ardenwood section of the city. It was, a, it was a real estate developer that came up the name Ardenwood. It's kind of a thin strip. It goes along on the west, uh, north side of Slope Boulevard and this section that we're in. So that's how it got the name Arden Wood. So I'll ask you a question. I mean, this came up when, for those who are 49er fans, when uh, they moved over here from um, Candlestick Park down to the peninsula, are they still the San Francisco 49ers? Yes. So I think that we'll still remain, we'll keep the name Arden Wood um, but it might, it will most likely and very likely be in a different location. So I think we're probably going to keep the name Arden Wood because yeah. we've worked very hard on our, um, our branding, branding yeah. um, our that type of thing. In the, in the field. We hope that when you get something in the mail that has that bird on it, the leaf bird, as we call it, that, you know, that you're going to learn something, you're going to grow. It'll be good to, um, It'll share good with news. others. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're, we work very hard on that and hope we, ex we expect that to continue. Do you plan to provide an on-site housing for nurses or workers? Another great question. 
Um, what we found is in surveying the people, and this is how we've got some generational changes going on here. Some people absolutely living, love living on, um, on, on the site here. Um, a lot don't. Um, and think of yourself, do you, do you like uh, living where you work? Well, a lot of people work from home now, so that's been quite a change as we know. But I guess it, it really depends I think that a lot of people from what been able to learn um, over the years, a lot of people live here because we have a pretty good price point. Do they necessarily wanna live on campus? Uh, does anyone like it when everyone knows when you're coming and going, hey, I saw you come in last night at 11 o'clock, everything okay? <laughs> no, I just went out for dinner and a walk, is that okay? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's how much you want people you know, when you're living in a community, you're living in a community. And so it's really giving the people the freedom to do that. So what we want to provide is a place where people can have good school, public schools and, uh, and mostly public schools, some private schools. But um, there's been a lot of changes that have happened in San Francisco in the last 10 years. Um, a lot of debate on that. Um, but there have been some pretty significant changes um, I'm not going to say that they've necessarily been for the better. Um, and also in terms of getting back to, jumping back to affordability for one minute, I'm part of a, a group uh, called Vistage, which is a business group and other CEOs. I'm the only nonprofit. So we deal with many different industries and leaders in their industries, typically smaller firms. So they're, you know, between five and five and, 50, 60 million in, in revenue or whatever. And um, they have difficulty recruiting people in terms of they pay a lot more than we do or even could dream to pay. And salaries. Um, in salaries, thank you. They can't get people to come. Um, anyway. What we're finding too is that our nurses, as they come, they may come to us um, fresh out of college, but the longer they stay, the more they look forward to having families of their own and having some more space and more privacy and more activities in a community, in a, in a wider community, and to not necessarily live on top of where they work. So we, we really want to keep remembering and, and um, that mission, that's what's driving us in this, in this new direction, and to make it possible for staff to rent or purchase um, in, within a, a normal commuting distance. So there's one other aspect of this. Do we need staff on, on site? We do. We will need a certain number of staff, yes. and we will have housing for them. And we look forward to having it be appropriate housing where they do have a, a, a better sense of privacy or of um, having a, a just a complete home sense that which we aren't able to provide right now. And a place that you want to invite someone back to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think in my tenure here, tenure here, I've really tried to improve our on-site housing so that you feel proud of where you live. People, the, our Christian Science Nursing nurses, all of our staff work very hard, and you want them to feel good about where they live and, and the sacrifices that they've made. Um, they're not making a, a, a huge salary. Um, we, we keep up. We've done. Get, we've worked with Gallagher to make sure that our salaries are consistent and so on, and, and giving raises and so on. But. Um, compared to a, a tech company in the, in the Bay Area, which a lot of our younger people, um, they kind of talk to their friends. And, well, what are, they, what are they making at Google? What are they making at Apple? What are they making at, at uh, different um, tech companies in the area? Well, we're not approaching that. Um, but it, it, it's a different work, all that sort of thing. But um, anyway, we'll continue. So we will plan to have some on-site housing because we need it because we're 24 seven, 365. Um, as I like to say at an annual meeting several years ago, the day that you graduated college, the day that you got married, the day that your ch first child was born, since May of 1930, Ardenwood Christian Science Nursing Services have been provided. So I would be willing to bet that most people on this call 
every single day that you've been on the on this earth, we've been operating twenty four seven and, mon and men, uh, ministering to patients. Some of them, your own family and, and my family. Um, and that will continue. That's why we're doing this to make sure that continues. That the, that the the that what we have enjoyed and with our loved ones and ourselves is available for future generations. And those that may not be aware of Christian Science yet, friends, we've got to we've got to expand and reach out to to tell people and share with people what we have. We must do that. It was interesting at the uh, conference that I was privileged to attend with John, along with several others from Ardenwood. One of the highlights was the reminder of sharing Christian science, not being afraid to say what we do and what we bring, what we offer to the world. And in the case of the four of us flew home together, John, you stayed for other meetings, night, yeah. um, the four of us flew home together and in every single one of us very unexpectedly had separate opportunities to share what we do and have a wonderful conversation about Christian science with someone who wasn't a Christian scientist. It was, it was stunning, but that thought was planted so firmly in the conference that the opportunity arose and each of us stepped up to the plate and we spoke about it when we were um, on our ride home back to Ardenwood together. I think that's something that we can all spend more time being aware of is the opportunity to share Christian science as opposed to just thinking, well, what about me? How, how, who's going to take care of me? It's, it's so much bigger than that. And that's something else that we really want to be focusing on as we go forward. I got to tell a story. Can I tell a story? Sure. It just came to me. So several years ago, when our daughter was younger, um, we were invited because it, it's apropos and what's in the news these days. So one of the people that her school was very high up in Twitter. And um, since that's so much in the news. So we got invited to this um, very smart party. And it was in um, the battery section of the city, something like that. But a very, very cool don't get invited to a lot of cool parties, but this is a cool party and very nice. And it was a birthday for um, his wife. And so it was really nice. And so we're sitting around the table and it's long tables and it's everyone, it's, we're having a good time. And so the, then the question comes, so what do you do? And so we're, there's like eight of us and I'm thinking, oh, you know, do I, <laughs> to your point about sharing, I thought, okay. And so we went around, you know, doctor, attorney, m and specialist, um, brain surgeon, you know, all, the, all these different things. And they get to me and I'm thinking, I um, run a Christian science nursing and care facility. Um, I take care of your mom and dad. Dead silence. And then, and then one guy leans forward, he goes, wow, that is, and he was sincere. And I, I thought first you're being played, but he said, wow, that is amazing. He goes, you know what? Nobody needs Twitter, but everybody needs a place to care for their loved ones and for their mom and dad. And so I'm thinking, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just fun. But we need a place like Ardenwood, and they need to know that there is an all. I don't like to say we're an alternative, but that that the, the Western medical model isn't the only model. Exactly. Because we know that Christian Science heals, and we need to share that. Yes. Okay, we'll keep going. Hope that we're not. Hope that we're not going too long here. Um, good question. How do you? How far do you consider quote access to major transport services to be? Very important. That's one of the criteria that we're looking at. We want to make sure that people can can reach us. We don't want to be in some off remote location that's difficult to get to. That's not what we're about. So that's where we would encourage your prayers, and there certainly are prayers. And at the same time, we're aware that <laughs> um, 
how many of us have discovered through these last two years of very unusual times that anything can be delivered to your home very quickly, that you can get anywhere very quickly, that what Uber has just burst on the scene and, and Lyft as well. And transportation systems are just growing exponentially. So we're, we're realizing that we don't have to be within 10 miles of an airport. We really can, we're, we're not trying to be, you know, hundreds of miles away from one, but, but we will be accessible. And that is a key point. It's just how, how will that access look? We're waiting to see. Next question. Is there a thought of spinning off the residential program to a separate entity? We're really praying, you know, in terms of how do we how do we make sure that um, and, and working with others, how do we have a place for Christian scientists? Um, we were on a development trip a couple of years ago, and I'll never forget it. This there was very great interest. It was actually, we were in Florida, as mm -hmm. I recall, mm -hmm. and so there was great interest in places to live. And they had chosen to live in Florida. They weren't thinking about coming to to the West, but um, and. Um, this one fellow said, you know what? Um, I choose restaurants now, but this is before social distancing, just full, full disclosure. So this is before social distancing, before COVID, any of that. And he said, you know, I choose my restaurants um, by how far the tables are apart. I thought, tell me more, you know what? And he said, because I don't want to hear people talking about their, their, their meds, their who their doctor is what they're what they often call now euphemistically is an organ recital you know how's this doing how's that doing so it's really um people christian scientists need a place that they're free of the medical influence or as as i read in my report that um was written by mr dickey adam adam dickey and mrs eddie's private secretary there at chestnut hill a place where people can receive care uh, with freedom from criticism. You know, what are you doing? What, you, you're what? Um, no, I'm acting upon my faith. This is how I want to be cared for by a skillfully trained Christian science nurse or, or individual who's a Christian scientist. And that's what we want to continue as well is make sure that we get the training right. And that's changing. Do we want to import the vast majority now of our um, Christian science nurses from other countries? That's not sustainable. We don't want to do that. We want to have a balance of that. There will be some, but we want to get more from our own country, from the United States. Um, there's a lot of questions going on here that we're considering and praying about and, and working towards um, finding workable solutions. The residential aspect has so many variables to it. It's You might be surprised to know that um, we have we have space at Ardenwood for our residents. We have residents, but many of the people who think they are interested in coming to Ardenwood are waiting. They're not coming um, early in their experience because they have families or they have other um, church responsibilities or um, volunteer situations or they're connected to their own community at home and they appreciate being there and staying there as long as they can. So as a result, the residents who are wanting to come to Ardenwood are a little further along in their experience and joining us um, at a different time um, but largely are waiting. Uh, and we want to be we want to be serving in the right way, um, along the, again, along the lines of supporting the ministry of nursing, um, being a support to those who are looking for just a little bit of community and a little bit of oversight um, in, in a nursing capacity. Um, and rather than being a community that is, uh, that is providing the social activities and all of the, the connections that you would get in, in the mainstream, you can find that somewhere else. When you're when you're coming to Arden Wood, you're coming for a slightly different reason, and I think that's become clearer to us. Whether it's right on site um, or whether there's a community near us that is more of a social environment, um, that's possible. It just might not be something that Arden Wood would necessarily run, or that we would partner with someone. Those are some. Those are some of the questions you were alluding to. And we want to get the scale right. I mean, you, yes. there there are 
others examples of facilities or organizations, some still uh, 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 vital and some gone on now, but that were, that were too large. And so we wanna make sure because we, we've got to get that right. We've got to get that model right. And it's a different business model. You know, the, the Christian Science Care is a residential is a different business model. Um, so it, it's it's really, how do we do this in a, in a gracious, loving, and enjoyable way where people want to live there? Um, so to be continued on that. Related so, to it is the next question as right. to whether someone could come who is a longtime seasoned Christian scientist, but whose spouse is not a Christian scientist. That's not a question we can answer today, is it? Right. We're, we, at, at the moment, that's not part of the picture. Um, how that might play out in the future, we have yet to see. We've had that question for yes. all the years that I've been associated with Ardenwood. I just love this point. This is a, more of a statement than a question. I think it's wonderful what Ardenwood is planning to do. And I love hearing about your desire to be energy, environmentally progressive true caregivers in all aspects. We're working with an incredible world-class developer and, and thinker and, you know, his master planner. Not master planner. You know, I love what he says about, you know, wanting to heal the earth. I mean, we want to be good stewards. I think we've been a wonderful stewards here um, and younger generations, as we know, in terms of how are we using solar? How are we using geothermal? How are we using our water? Are we using gray water? I've wanted to do gray water here for years to, to, um, to, uh, for um, irrigation. Pretty challenging to, to set that up with the con current configuration that we have. Um, I would like to know if you do, I would like to know if you, if do, you do, if relocate. you do relocate, excuse me, thank you. Mm -hmm. Will Ninth Church and the reading room still remain? So Ninth Church, is right around the corner. It's um, less than half a mile from here. Um, that's a, an open question. Uh, certainly, I've been a member of Ninth Church since 1999, chairman of Building and Grounds for that long too. So I know every light bulb I've changed. I've, I've basically worked in that church. I don't know how many years is that? Long time. So in the reading room uh, on West Portal, we wanna have a presence um, but we'll see uh, in, in, in attending Ninth Church, a large uh, percentage, the vast majority of percentage attendees of Ninth Church, San Francisco are Ardenwood people. So it's, a, it's an open question. Um, don't know the answer to that. Certainly love, love Ninth Church. I've loved it for these many years and I and, and cared for it. Personally. And that does relate to a question that's coming up in terms of, are we considering um, being close to a Christian science church? Yes, that mm -hmm. is, we are. Um, we, we want to be part of a Christian science church community, and um, we look forward to that. Absolutely. It, it may be that we start one. <laughs> mm -hmm. How many of us are in that position as, as we move in our lives. And we may not be close to one, but perhaps we start one, but it's a, it's a top priority. And you've talked about, you're on the East Coast, you're mm -hmm. located, Amy works remotely, she's here often, but she's not located here. And some of the things you're working through on the East Coast. Yeah, in um, terms of our small church, yes. Next up, my question is whether you might consider relocating to Idaho, Utah, or Arizona, since the land and taxes would be more affordable. Any of those states would bring Christian science nursing to people in the West, upper Midwest and Northwest. Really listening, um, not entirely certain, but we want to, what Amy said earlier, we wanna make sure that there are more Christian science nurses available. Um, there are a tremendous, there are many different reasons we won't go into it why there are fewer Christian science church few, fewer Christian science nurses right now but um, there are there are many reasons for it but there there has been a wave of retirements in the last 10 years um, and difficulty getting people either in on immigration status due to immigration issues or getting people to consider Christian science nurses 
And so anybody listening, if you know someone, a younger person or mid-career, um, maybe their, their families have, they're launched and they'd like to serve. There are so many different ways of becoming a Christian science nurse. And there've been some wonderful webinars. Our sister facility at Chestnut Hill has had them. We've had these webinars of people getting to them to consider Christian science nursing. Um, it is a wonderful profession and it really serves. And so um, we want to make Christian science nurses available in the field. Some areas and states don't have uh, Christian science facilities near them or Christian science nurses near them. We wanna make sure they're more available. So there's a lot of work going on within the Christian science nursing community in that respect. So, and in terms of the locations that you're suggesting, there's the openness, as John said, we are truly listening for where our right place is, our meaning, meaning Arden Woods right place is, where, where this mission of ours can best serve the, the, the broad community of, of Christian scientists around the world. Exactly. I'm sure you are considering locations where the weather and airport facilities are appropriate. The above states, I believe, would be worth considering for those respects also. Well, certainly, you know, God knows what, what where the right place is to be. And I don't say that lightly in any regard. This is, this is serious business. And, um, but we want to make sure, hopefully, all those stars will align. And that's, that's what we've been working with. The, the, the thought, the timing, um, everything that's, that's going on right now has been, it's been amazing to be a part of this process. Um, truly, and I could go on. So the next um, question is, if a new construction project is necessary, will the plans include space for a memory care unit? And the answer to that is that- What we call mental impositions. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. mental impositions. Mm -hmm. um, the answer to that is it's always in thought. We know that there's a need, that there's, there are requests for that kind of care. Mm -hmm. As you can imagine, there's also a, a, a need for, for training within the Christian science nursing field for the, in order to provide that kind of care. And if we're already, since the, the whole field is right now working to train more Christian science nurses, it, it's going to take some time to have enough nurses to cover the basic issues as well, and then to be able to cover memory, uh, excuse me, mental impositions care. It remains in our thought. We would like to be nimble enough, that's part of the nimbleness that you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm nimble enough to provide that at the right time when we have those trained nurses. But we certainly don't wanna be providing something that we cannot properly provide. We can't provide you the, with the, but an individual with the proper care. It was my fervent hope to have uh, uh, mental positions because it covers different things. You know, This is not just clever wording again. It is an imposition. And anyone who has dealt with that with a loved one, my goodness, they're so clear on the fact that that's not them. Um, and so we want to be able to handle that. And, but as I mentioned earlier in this discussion or the question and answer period, the costs were exorbitant. And then we've had a challenge with a number of Christian science nurses that could, could um, uh, allocate to that important work. Um, and you also have to be well-trained in that. It's not just, um, there are some we've learned in this process of learning there are some very outstanding Christian science nurses that, that they're not, they dealing with mental issues is not something that they're comfortable with. I'm okay, that's all right. And others that, that you wouldn't expect that, that work beautifully with patients that, that have that claim. Mm -hmm. So um, let's continue to cherish that, shall we? Yes. And can we? Because um, there is a need. And those that are caring for loved ones, my goodness, um, we want to be able to meet that need, yes. truly. Okay. Um, if rents are considerably less in, a, in the new area, will there be any reduction in rent for the residents who move to the new location? Um, that's pretty far along, but certainly we want to price things appropriately. Mm -hmm. 
uh, make them available to be living in a vibrant community so that you don't have classes, but everyone can come, you know, uh, to enjoy the working together and praying for our, our own community and then for the world. If there's ever a time that there's more prayer needed for the world, uh, it's now. Um, what are the plans for affordable independent living in the new Ardenwood for those who have served the Christian science cause? Interesting question. question. We were just um, made aware very recently of a new fund um, from the National Fund for Christian science nurses who have been journal listed for at least 10 years, mm -hmm. um, who are 65 or older and who have a financial need for some support in order to, um, to manage their, their rent or their, their mortgage. And that fund has just been started. And what, what an amazing thing to be available so that, that finances don't have to be something that limits someone from an experience that's right for them in terms of housing. And Ardenwood would certainly be a place that someone could, who, who fit the criteria of the National Fund would be able to, to um, participate in. It's, we, we love to support the, um, those who have devoted their lives to the Christian science field in any capacity. So that, that's an open question and we look forward to, to hearing from you when it's the right time. And then are you considering locating no farther than one hour from a major airport? Certainly that's, we'd love that. We talked about that earlier, but definitely want uh, adequate transportation. Yes, that's something that is definitely much part of our criteria. Um, go ahead. You wanna... then, yeah, the next question. Um, what is the main reason for leaving such a beautiful building to start another new facility? Is it the environment? Sure. I mean, as I say, this is beautiful. Uh, there's, there's no question about, about the beauty of Arden Wood. Is this something that future generations want to take on? Not from all indications, no. Um, the costs in terms of operating Arden Wood and the dependence that we have, and all nonprofits raise funds. Yes, they do. There, there, there is not a large, there is not a, a the, the size of the pool to which, from which to draw um, our funding is smaller. We know that right now. Certainly we wanna expand it. I've dedicated my life to do that in these last 20, 25 years. So that's certainly big on my, list in terms of getting people to give and, and know why they're giving and, and get them to get their estate plans in order, um, all those different things. So um, as I say, we're using a third of the space that we have. We have 117,000 square feet in this building. We're using a very small percentage of that. Um, we've worked diligently um, in terms of reaching out to get more residents, more patients, all that type of thing. Um, it's, it's not sustainable in the long term. This is not um, an issue of, I won't get into finances too much here, but in terms of we are in a good place for the next three years or so in terms of um, being able to make this decision. This is one of the notes that I took um, about that we're making this decision and this transition on our own terms. I just wrote, I was on the flight last night. I said, I've been grateful over the years when people moved to Ardenwood on their own terms. They sold the big house that, that um, they enjoyed raising their families and et cetera, but realized that a change needed to be made and they made it time and again. I saw the joy that came from such a prayerful, inspired planning and transition. On the flip side, I've also seen in my work when it wasn't planned and the challenges and the discord and the less than favorable results that ensued. So it's just, we're making this on our own terms um, in terms of, so that we're not looking to make this quick uh, in any, in any way, shape, or form. This is a thoughtful process. 
We've got wonderful members of the planning and head committee with, and as well as our board of trustees. Um, this has been a thoughtful and will continue to be a very thoughtful and inspired process. Um, it's, it's neat to be focusing on a mission and refocusing on why did we get that 501c3 designation to begin with? We want to fulfill that mission. I, I want to add to that just from the standpoint, again, of let's pick up on the, the last point that John made about our mission. We keep bringing it back to mission because that is the motivation behind everything. It's easy to say, um, it, it might be easy for, for someone listening to think, well, okay, so you have empty rooms, we'll run out and find people and, and we'll fill those rooms. Will that do it? Will that keep you where you are? Well, we can't take more patients because we don't have enough nurses. When I say we, that's across the board in the United States, nurses are needed. We want to be focusing on that need. We're not looking to fill a building in order for the to stay in the building. We need a we need the building to serve us, not us to keep having to serve this building through maintenance issues, through empty rooms, through um, the, the variety of, of, cons of issues that arise in a 94-year-old building when the world of, of um, um, modern times have just changed every aspect of, of the way systems work and the way our carbon footprint runs and the way our housing needs have changed. Um, so for so many reasons that are that are linked to that mission of serving the manual bylaw, that's the reason for Ardenwood's existence, is to promote and serve the Ministry of Christian Science Nursing. We have to scale appropriately in, in, in order to fulfill that mission. And that does require us at this point, we're not, um, we're not in the same place that Ardenwood was when it first opened, and there were 600 members in, in one of the churches and 500 members in another one of the local branch churches and hundreds of people coming through the doors of Arden Wood. That's not where we've been for decades. And now is the time, given that we are on such a firm financial footing, now's the time for us to really make a change that will draw our attention back to that mission of training and supporting nurses, as opposed to trying to fill rooms. And as I mentioned, you know, this business group I'm in, so we get, in, the way Vistage works is that members in the, your group, you have a chair and then you have a group of, of participants of, from different industries. So no one's competing against each other. It's, it's a neat model. And so we have finance, um, construction, um, technology, jewelry, um, in terms of a, uh, some jewelry company, um, uh, design, uh, many different members, Pier 39, um, different uh, uh, accounting, anyway. And they'll come, so we'll have them on the fifth floor. And so I host once we rotate the hosting. Everyone's blown away. They say, can my mom live here? Can you? So, and, and the question is always, why don't you have a waiting list? I don't, I don't understand. I mean, every, every place that this, this industry is exploding, why don't you have a waiting list? We're, we're priced appropriately. We reach out regularly. Um, there hasn't been the interest. Um, that's hard to tell people who are non-Christian scientists because they're saying, well, what's, you know, what's going on? And so we have done everything that we know in terms of, as I say, pricing it correctly, offering, I think we've got the best food, I'm gonna speak so, <laughs> of, of every facility. We have outstanding food here. We've got a beautiful location. Um, this is not a, a new thing. This has been going on for, for decades as, as Amy just indicated. So we wanna be good stewards of what we have um, and make it available so that it is workable, so that um, the numbers work so that we have a proper endowment. We've been growing our endowment, but um, we've also got a, um, we're 24 7, 365. 
So there are significant costs involved in uh, running an operation like this. Um, so yeah, you brought up one other point that um, we're we have learned and firsthand, and we've certainly um, learned through a lot of experience with other fundraisers that um, donors want to know that their funds are going towards that mission, towards whatever mission you have to um, clean up oceans from pollution, to save pets from abuse, to you know, help people in fire situations or support a Christian science care facility. And that's, we want to be good stewards of those funds. We have to be. And we're finding too that donors today want to feel that they're giving to something that is truly sustainable and that they're not being asked constantly to give. Mm -hmm. And um, that requires us to look very honestly at how we operate and how we can do a better job. And those are all some of the, there's so many factors that have gone into the, 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 the study and the prayer and the research for this, the behind this decision that the board of trustees and the planning ahead committee have done. Um, it's been it's been quite remarkable, and we will continue it, especially with your input. And it, and it will be beautiful. I mean, that's the thing. I think a hallmark of, of Ardenwood is its beauty and grace. We certainly want that to continue. That's that's certainly in everybody's thought in terms of what would be attractive. Because when you're when you're not feeling well, um, as I tell the staff, you know, or, or when you come for rest and study, I tell the staff I want people to come in the room and go, oh rather than, oh, you know, there's a big difference. You know, we, there's, there are people that give us the furniture that they had that they loved, you know, but they want to give it to us. And we're grateful for that. Well, some of the pieces are wonderful and we, we've kept those and others that are, that are a little bit well, too much well-loved, we, we move them along because we want whoever comes here, whether it's in a rest and study room, if it's in, if, if they don't, if they're not bringing their own furniture, if they're a resident, um, the, the, the furniture that they use here when they go on the Christian science nursing floor. I've been a patient here twice. I've expressed that. Um, when you're there alone in, in the middle of the night, when, when you're not in the presence of, of a loved one or a Christian science nurse, you want the, 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 the surroundings to be beautiful and functional. We've worked very hard for that. Um, that will continue because it, it represents Christian science it represents our thought. And so we want to make sure we get that right. And we will get that right. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure, again, we go back to it. We've had some interesting experiences with architects and see what's out there and what the configuration is. Right now, our configuration is really long hallways. They don't do that anymore. And there's a reason why they don't do that anymore. Exactly. We would like to have, in terms of how we move our patients, one of the things we saw at Glenmont, which is amazing, is and a lot of facilities have it, where how you move patients by things in the ceiling. So you can lift your, the patient and move them or to bathe, you know, to, to get them to, to, to be bathed or to be cared for, or change their sheets or, or, or turn them. Um, there's so much technology that's available that really isn't easy to do in the current configuration or the building that we have. Exactly. And so the next question we've kind of answered. If, if the donors responded generously, would Arden would consider staying and not selling? I don't know that we can, uh, we can say absolutely not, that we'd have to really give a lot of prayer to that question and we we have but all indications right now is that the answer to that is no that we have outgrown out outgrown this particular location and part of that reason again we keep bringing it back to mission but to support our nurses and their right to a balanced experience we need to move San Francisco as a larger community simply doesn't offer the, the opportunity for our nurses and our staff members to live the kind of natural, normal life experience that, that, that they, they deserve to have. And we have to go with that. And then we add in the fact that to renovate 
this building would number one still leave us with much more space than we than we need and would secondly require so much infrastructure renovation as well as renovation so that we could have modern lifts that can help our nurses um, and and help us move into the modern world it's just it, it feels to us that it is beyond the scope of what we should be thinking about for the future. And the costs and the business environment in San Francisco is quite challenging. We've learned that with COVID in terms of the health regulations. Um, we've all faced that wherever we are, I'm sure. Um, the costs associated, we've had estimates, just this is literally on the back of an envelope. So this is not um, very detailed, but engineers thinking about what we would like to do with this building start at, you know, um, 20 to 25 million to do what we want to do in this building. Um, we looked at a housing, uh, developing, redeveloping our housing a few years ago. Um, sorry, it's, it's a little bit warm here. So we have some cool breezes coming in. That's why you heard a door slam. Um, and the housing costs. The housing costs to, to basically, because the housing was built at a time when a lot of the Christian science nurses were single, right? So it was a single woman. That was the model then. And they um, shared bathrooms? They shared a bathroom. Yeah. When's the last time you shared a bathroom? Do you enjoy that? I don't know. I just, <laughs> I'm not trying to be uh, a smart aleck here. But people, people have changed in what they want. They would like to have a meal with in their own apartment rather than go to a different building to have a meal. Um, or a communal kitchen. Or a communal kitchen. Anyway, so we really had a wonderful plan to basically redo, to, to make it work on, on this site. That construction, if we, were, if we were to scrape, as they say here in California, scrape it and start over, that was about 40 million. And that, that was, was just for, for our housing for our employees. Housing, right. So the costs are crazy high, just so you know, I don't know, gas uh, at this point, we were just in Ohio yesterday, or I was in uh, $4 a gallon for regular, $6 a gallon for regular here. That's just gas. That's just one small example. And I realize we're in a unique time, but the costs are very high. So we're trying to get this right. Sorry to ramble. So the next question, would the new facility be identical to current setup or programs like rest and study? Would they be eliminated? I know it takes up a lot of resources, but it's a wonderful support for Christian scientists and we feel the same way. Um, the question, I think that is part of our mission because that's part of healing. People who come for true rest and study are coming for inspiration, refreshment, um, a, a, a deeper sense of joy, peace, um, and, and spiritual growth. And that is all mission driven. So we anticipate that any activity that is where healing is at the foundation of it is something that we want to be supporting in, in the way that we can. And that's part of our nimbleness as well. The, the idea we have to be nimble in the future. Exactly. Um, and we love to have rest and study. Um, that is wonderful. And we're constantly trying to get people to come and enjoy it. Um, as we said, we have incredible food. We've got public transportation getting here. Um, it just, we hope that we've been the open hand. Um, and, but the world wants to keep us all busy. And, and so what happens is you get people that do come for rest and study and they go, oh my goodness. I've heard it, if I heard it once, I've heard it 2000 times. Well. 200 times, um, that I wish I would have done this sooner. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. So what does error, moral mind, life want to do? Just keep you busy, 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 so that you don't have that time to, 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 to step back and reflect and pray and then go back out on the field. So we would love people to come. And so we're hoping that in the new location or whatever father directs us here, um, which appears to be that, um, that we would have some rest and study because it's so important. Mm -hmm. And again, in a beautiful place. Another question. Currently, there is a large amount of space dedicated to our training facility. 
Um, while it is great, it is greatly underutilized. Would the new facility also be for training or would all training be consolidated at the BA in Chestnut Hill, Boston? And would the, would the new facility be for mentoring only? We you can handle that. We'll both, we'll both handle it. You go ahead. We anticipate having a training program. Absolutely. Right now, right now we're focused on mentoring because we have a number of nurses that need mentoring. And to move them forward in their ministry, we are focusing on that. Gratefully, the BA can, can um, teach all levels of training, and that gives us the freedom right now to focus on mentoring. Um, but our vision is to be a training site. Um, and for training, you need two things. You need trainees and you need patience, patience to serve, to be served. So that gives us, there, there are the two <clears throat> main arms of our mission being fulfilled right there to promote that, that nurse bylaw, Christian <clears throat> science nurse bylaw, and by training and by providing the, the ability to mentor on site as well. We also look forward to, to growing <clears throat> our sense of training, um, whether it be to support someone who wants to be mentored at one of the Christian science summer camps, or to spend some time at Principium being mentored, or to go to a different facility and be mentored in order simply to experience a different part of the country, or training, uh, excuse me, uh, mentoring under different guidance for a different kind of care. We're just hoping to be more collaborative with training that's going on around the country not to lower our standards by any stretch, um, but to welcome- Raise the standards. To, yeah, and to well, raise the standards everywhere and to welcome the, um, the inspiration that will lead people such as those whose children are in school now. And um, a, a mom or a dad might feel like, gosh, if I were a Christian science nurse, I could work for five hours a day and perhaps be of, of support to my community or a facility nearby. Um, and, and that could be, that's something I've always wanted to do, but didn't have the opportunity to do. Someone um, later in, in their experience who's leaving a career and wondering what to do next. Well, they too could be a, a, a nurse, a Christian science nurse with some training. So we're, we're opening our thought to how training can, how we can continue to support training. It will definitely be part of our new facility. Absolutely. Training is just essential. And, and I would just like to say too, in terms of we've gone about an hour and 15 minutes, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up soon, is that um, you have young people who are, they, we call it, remember a, a talk that we had here, a heart for service. Do you remember that? Sue Spots was the, was the just I, every time I hear that title, it makes my heart sing. And um, so you've got young people and then, but you, you know, the parents have sent them to college and so, and so they're interested in becoming a Christian science nurse. And often it's the families or loved ones that say, oh, honey, do you, do you really want to do that? Don't you want to have a family? Don't you want to have a life? You know? And so you have people that don't go into Christian science nursing, and then, they, and then they come back to it later, because that's what's in their heart. Let's support those. And if we see people in our churches or in our Sunday schools or in our camps, that's why it was so fun to be at Cedars, is that's where we get some nice, some wonderful Christian science nurses from that say, Yes, I want to dedicate my life to serving people, that ministry of Christian science nursing for healing. They want to be a, a force for good in the world. And so let's encourage those people. And that's where we want to have a balance. And that's where younger people have this that whole notion of work-life balance. We just had an exercise that we've done here at Ardenwood and that we did it with at AOCSN conference in terms of what are what gen, what do generations look for? And the younger generations, they want a balance. They just want that. And they, so they want, want to, to give to, their all. They want to give their to all. more than one thing. Uh, you know, an, uh, um, a, an older generation was raised to give their all and, and just truly give their all, oftentimes sacrificing a, another aspect of their life, perhaps. But uh, younger generations want to be able to give their all to their relationships, all to their job, all to their 
their gym membership or their 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 adventuring, um, their and all all to whatever else is in their life that they love, and that's something that we want to support because that brings freshness and inspiration to every aspect of life. So. Um, anyway, we hope this this period this period of questions has been helpful, useful. Um, know that the love that you have for Arden Wood um, is very much cherished in our own thought. This this is something that we're deeply praying about. We've done a lot of research on, listening on, and we will continue to listen. Um, we want to continue to keep moving forward, um, and that doesn't mean anything other than listening for God's voice. Um, but all indications are of what we've already shared. So we have a couple more questions. Oh, we do. Yes. Oh, I thought, sorry. No, a couple more. Sorry One is very specific. What will happen to the library and the various study rooms throughout the building? Good question. Great question. We, I, I would imagine we would have a library and a study area in a new facility. We're certainly not Absolutely. going to let go of, of our books and our wonderful collection. Um, that will be part of wherever we go. Yes, we've got a wonderful Bible uh, study library. And why do we have it there? I was here when we basically put it there. And, and um, uh, that was part of my work when I was in the development. And, and so... We want people to know that Christian science is based on the Bible. There's so much misunderstanding. Isn't that the way animal magnetism or error works? It's just like, let's, let's, let's confuse it. Let's, let's make sure that no, nah, it's really not Bible-based. We're absolutely based on the Bible. And, and we know that as students of Christian science and actively um, love the Bible. And um, so that's there. And then we have the Christian science reading room, which we're sitting in right now. We absolutely want to have places for study and reflection. But I will say, um, not but, but and, I will say, these rooms don't get used that much. People are, they're, they're going online, they're going on JSH online, they're doing things differently. Um, and so we want to be able to have the flexibility, have the beauty and, and the place. And that gets back to also so many facilities that have been at a, at a turning point for whatever reason in different parts of the country, they've, um, they've decided that they didn't want their facility anymore. So they've gone to a visiting nurse service. Well, that's really important. And we wanna expand our visiting, Christian Science Visiting nurse, Nursing Service, and we will. But you also need a place. Um, if you're the only Christian scientist in your family, or there are certain things that just can't be done in the home. Um, or you don't have family. Or you don't, right, you don't have family, or whatever the reason is, you want to have a place. And so we want to ensure that that place is beautiful, functional, joyous, bright, beautiful. Um, we've looked at some architecture where you have um, just amazing designs. Um, this is a beautiful design. This is from a different era in terms of how we want to, to do that. Um, some of you just sidebar, why don't you have solar at Ardenwood? This is, because I'd love to have solar. Um, it costs us just for historical reason, uh, uh, perspective. Um, I was here when we re-roofed re Ardenwood from the, the, the original slate that was put on in 1929, 1930. Um, to the tile that we have now for, for earthquake uh, and, and code requirements and so on. There was many different reasons why we replaced the roof. It costs more to replace the roof than it did to build all of Ardenwood. That was in 1999, 2000, 2001. Um, so it, it's, it's costly, but anyway, in terms of solar, this is one of the foggiest parts of the city. Um, so literally we did a study on it and to put in solar panels, this was be the at least two years ago. Maybe solar's changed in two years, but it was really not feasible to do it in this location. Not the right place. So. Another question: Is Ardenwood on the National Register of Historic Buildings? Great question. No, we are not. But it's interesting. Um, uh, Basically everything, and I was talking to a friend uh, who participated in the conference from England, <laughs> and I was telling him that basically anything um, before 1950 
in San Francisco, I think it's around 1950. I think I got the, I always get fact checked, but I think that's right. Something around 1950 that buildings are protected um, that were built before 1950. And, you know, in England, it's like, they're like hundreds of years 1750, old. <laughs> right? Um, but anyway, for here, it's 1950. And so, um, but we are not designated as a as a a site, a nationally recognized site, like for historical purposes. There is another Registered. question, somewhat related. Are there any restrictions regarding the sale or demolition of the four four five building, the main building? Good question. Um, what we've learned is that if we were to stay, and I want to make sure I get this right, so just. I hope that I've got this right. I think that I do. But what the way I understand it is that if we were to stay in this location and the, the 501c3 religious designation that we have, we could take this building down. Right. If someone were to acquire this, very difficult to get it down because um, they can of, renovate, they can renovate, but the, but the likelihood can't. that it would be taken down, very unlikely. That's not to say anything can happen. I, I'm sure if, if you're a, a multi gazillion dollar company, maybe you could get it down over time. But that's also another thing to get anything done in San Francisco takes ages. Mm -hmm. So if we were to say we wanted to do this, this project that we talked about in terms of housing, the number of years it would take to go through all of the, the um, going through the process with the neighborhood, going through the process with the city, um, very complex, very expensive, very time consuming. Is that, is that a good use of our, our resources? I just don't think so. So as we move forward and as we consider um, this idea of, of selling the property and moving, there are, um, we've been speaking with people who, who know far more than John and I um, that have indicated that um, we can do, we can um, work with an offer um, and, and uh, create contingencies, if you will, or in certainly request them. Um, and that would be part of an agreement for instance, but what we can't do is guarantee that the person who purchases the facility or the property mm -hmm. um, is doesn't turn around and sell it to someone else who and and without any of those contingencies. So and that's where you rely where upon prayer. the city and county of San Francisco. I mean, city, that's yes. you know we we would love to see this continue. The beauty that's here, the eucalyptus trees, everyone knows those. Who knows Arden Wood? All those types of things, and I think that will continue. I think the, the city, there are hearts in the right place. It just takes forever to do anything, but um, let's just hold to that does. as well. That this is this what we're doing is a complete idea. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is this is our fervent prayer. This is not wordplay. This is not clever. This is Christian Science speak. We are loving something into view to see its manifestation as uh, an effective well-resourced Christian science nursing facilities so that we have the resources that someone, that those in future generations will be able to take this on and go forward. I, I'm reminded of God's law of adjustment where that, that wonderful question, if you're drowning in the middle of the ocean, do you believe that God can save you, that you can be saved? And I wanna flip that and say, if we are envisioning and loving this idea of a new Ardenwood interview and loving the Ardenwood site that we would be leaving, why would that not include a perfect, perfect demonstration for this site going forward as much as a perfect demonstration for Ardenwood going forward in a new location? Absolutely. That's our prayer. God right. can do anything. Nothing's impossible. To the next, on. yeah. So the next question. Let's get, yep. let's wrap this up. Yeah. Sure. Um, would you consider and explore the concept of an all age facility or community to meet the special needs of Christian scientists 
for long and short-term assistance or nursing care, and residency not too far from San Francisco, for instance, in the Monterey Bay area. So a long a, a, a concept of an all age facility um, and community. I you know I think we have to just say the same words we've been saying over and over again, and and respond to that by saying we are interested in serving our mission, and that that will continue. It has guided us this far, and it will continue to guide the decisions as we go forward. Fair? Thank you for that. We'll leave it at that. And thank you all. I hope this, we hope this has been useful. We'll continue to communicate with the field. We would appreciate your questions, your input. Um, and we'll keep updating the frequently asked questions. There are several more here that are far more detailed than we can respond to. Are you going to be in a location just like West Portal? You know, our, we, we can't answer that yet. We don't, we honestly don't have answers. Do we love the conveniences we currently have? Absolutely. Have we all learned that some play, that, that we can order things online and have them delivered within hours that almost makes it seem as if you don't need a community like that? We have. Do we also appreciate the combination of both? We do, just like we appreciate the hybrid nature of Christian Science Church services today. And who knew we'd ever say that? So we, we keep going forward step by step. We appreciate your support. It's important and vital at this time. We appreciate your financial support, your prayers, um, your ideas, um, all of that. We're in this together, yes. and that's what we want to communicate. We've got a, a tremendous um, outpouring. We've had a tremendous outpouring of love from the field. We expect that conti to continue. We would appreciate your prayers for the leadership um, of our planning ahead committee, of the staff that we have here at Ardenwood. And the board of um, trustees. The board of trustees that we have at Ardenwood, as well as doing our, our work for ourselves um, and for our church in this world. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we look forward to staying in touch with you. Goodbye for now. Bye.